Hello, welcome to Nature Source Care. My name is Dr. Fonda Goldman. I'm a naturopathic physician, and today I was going to talk about marmotherapy and specifically the Ayurvedic energy points on the elbow and forearm that you can use to help <coughs> your health, actually. So let's get started. Note of caution uh, before, as always, the information presented here is for educational purposes only and should not be considered medical advice. For any symptoms that are severe or worsening, please contact a qualified healthcare professional. And it's always important to determine the root cause of any disease and to develop a comprehensive treatment plan of which marmotherapy can be a part. Individual cases can vary in terms of treatments that are most effective, so please keep that in mind. And also solo therapies may not be appropriate or effective in all cases. So doing marmotherapy by itself without other therapies may not um, do much good on its own, depending on what's uh, going on and what the causes are. Just a few words about marmotherapy generally. It comes from Ayurveda, which is traditional Indian medicine. Um, this uh, therapy is more than 5,000 years old, and I like to use it because it's non-invasive. There's no needles involved. It's, um, you can kind of think of it as Ayurvedic acupressure. <coughs> but again, it comes from the Indian tradition, not the Chinese tradition. Marma therapy is considered an energy therapy. So um, there are 107 marma points on the body. And when you work with these points, you're basically working to balance energies in the body. So because this is an energy therapy paradigm, um, you kind of have to get in the mindset that people and diseases, states of health, are more energy and waves more than sort of the modern biochemical or biomechanical um, um, situation. Yeah, so it's you, your mind has to work a little bit differently. The other thing is that when you use touch in with this therapy, marma therapy, you know you're allowing the energies to rebalance themselves. So you don't need much pressure, and you don't need long pressure. Most of these points you only need to work with for thirty to sixty seconds. Um, and again, it's not because it's not a biomechanical, biochemical model that we're working with here. Um, you don't, you know, pushing harder, longer isn't necessarily going to get you um, better results. Okay, so keep that in mind as well. If you want more history on marma therapy, I would look at my first video, Marma Points on the Hand. And along with that, I created a Marma Points on the Hand follow along video. So if you want an experience of Marma therapy that you can just sort of follow along and do on yourself, that's available. And then again, because we're talking about elbow and forearm points today, um, uh, I have also Marma Points on the shoulder and upper arm. So Marma Points on the hand, Marma Points on the elbow, Marma Points on the shoulder. Basically with those three videos, you get all the Marma Points from the shoulder down to the hand. So you get the whole upper extremity. If you're interested in this kind of content, I would look at my Marma Therapy, Ayurveda, and Body Care playlists because I always organize my videos into playlists so that they're easy to find. So with that being said, let's get started with the points. We're gonna be covering four new points today. The first one is called Ani, which in Sanskrit means tonification. The location of this point is at the cubital crease of the elbow, so the kind of fold right there at the front part of the elbow if your palm is facing forward, so um, anatomical position. And it's on the ulnar or medial side um, of the tendon of the biceps brachii muscle. So basically it's on the inside closer to your trunk, okay? So you follow the line and you just go inside and you're at that point. So the energies that are balanced by this point are the Vyanavayu, Apanavayu, the Klitika Kapha, and the Shleshika Kapha. So these words may not mean much to you, um, but if you're a deeper student of Ayurveda, or if you get around to it eventually, these energies basically um, reflect different energies in the body. So just one example, Shleshika Kapha, for example. Kapha is a kind of earth energy, so it's built up of elements of earth and water. And shleshika, especially related to joints, is a lubrication you know, inside the joint to provide some cushion and the lubrication around the joint. So especially when you see shleshika kapha <coughs> and with any of these points, it's going to be related to lubrication and fluids. Okay. So just one example. In any case, this point is indicated for upper extremity issues 
And if you watched any of my Marma videos, you know that all Marma points have local indications as well as potentially others. So again, with Ani here, you can get increased range of motion. You can help with pain, lymphadenopathy. So if you have some swelling, you know, maybe even up until the armpit there, this can be helpful. Issues with the elbow and forearm. So golfers, tendonitis or medial epicondylitis or t tennis elbow, lateral epicondylitis um, can be helped with this point. Tingling, numbness, carpal tunnel, neuropathy and tremor. So even issues going into the hand can be helped with this point. This point, again, because it deals with fluids, generally, um, it helps with pancreatic dysfunctions um, because the pancreas helps to um, enzymatically digest, uh, especially sugars and that sort of thing. So you can be hyperglycemic, hypoglycemic, diabetic, that sort of thing. It can potentially help with that. But of course, you've got to watch carbs in your diet. <laughs> so this won't magically, you know, it would be lovely, right, if this magically got rid of carbs uh, from your diet. Um, but that it doesn't work like that. <laughs> um, also, it helps with bladder uh, issues such as tone of the bladder. So if there's a bit of prolapse or bladder dysfunction, incontinence, cystitis, stones in the bladder, um, this point can be helpful. And again, it's helpful with fluids generally in the body. So the ambushrota, which means the water channels of the body. Okay, so that's Ani. Number two is Bahu Indra Basta, which means crown of Indra. Um, where you find it, so if you go to this crease again, right at the elbow, and you go to the middle, and you go two fingers down, um, so at the midpoint of the cubital crease, two fingers down, you'll be here at the Bahu Indra Basta. And um, the energy is balanced by this point of the Dhyana Vayu, the Apana Vayu, and the Sadaka Pitta. Indications for this point, again, local stuff, pain, lymphadenopathy, neuropathy, trem tremors, and carpal tunnel. So again, you know, helping things even with the hand. This point can also be helpful with colon issues. So flatulence, constipation, diarrhea, IBS, IBD, Crohn's, ulcerative colitis, um, almost anything you have going on with colon. And then the point on the right arm, the Bahu Indra bust on the right arm is related to the ascending colon, the cecum, and the hepatic flexure. And then the point on the left side is related to the descending colon and the splenic flexure. So if you know that there's specific issues on either side, you can work with the right or left points more or less, depending on what you need. This point is also helpful with gynecological issues, specifically menstrual cramps. So that's kind of a nice uh, uh, benefit. And um, this point is also helpful with agni and toxins. So agni means fire. Um, of the body and there's fire of tissues and fire of appetite and that sort of thing and fire is important for transforming things so this uh, specifically transforming toxins in the body and burning them up so when you work this point and it helps you balance out your colon so you're getting things like regular bowel movements instead of too much you know too much water with the diarrhea or not enough water with the constipation you'll get more regular bowel movements and this will actually help the clarity of your mind because when you have things backed up in the colon when you have toxins built up in your body even if it's you know you're late a day or two some people are kind of used to that you know they only go to the bathroom every other day or so or twice a week that's going to affect your mind that's why like in yoga they suggest that you actually go to the bathroom have a bowel movement before you do your meditation because it will help you stay focused and along with that um, this point in general, Indra is um, in uh, Indian uh, folklore is the head of the gods. And so um, he was really um, responsible for understanding somebody's dedication and devotion to spiritual efforts. Yeah. So if your body is working well and you can transcend the body, Right, through yoga and then because your colon is getting cleaned out and that helps to clear the mind so that you can sit well in meditation these sorts of things will help you with your spiritual practices by stabilizing the mind helping with persistence and per per spiritual efforts and then releasing emotion emotions that aren't serving you so especially in this case vata type emotions 
um, such as fear, restlessness, and anxiety. Okay, so there is actually <laughs> um, uh, spiritual related benefits to working with this point. So keep that in mind. You had no idea that your elbow did all this, right? <laughs> Um, so the third point is kurpara, which means corner, and this is literally the sharp pointy end of your elbow there, or the tip of the olecranon process, if you want the medical terminology. The energies balanced by this point are the vyana vayu, the shleshika kapha, so again, lubrication. And the indications are a little bit more limited with this one, but basically it coordinates uh, movement for the, up, for the upper extremity in the elbow, so it's helping uh, coordinate with the shoulder and then local effects, so pain, range of motion for the elbow and forearm, and then epicondylitis, golfers and tennis elbow both. Okay, so short and sweet on that one. And then the last point is baya kurpara, or external corner. So this is the bony protuberance of the lateral epicondyle of the humerus. So if you go to the sharp pointy kurpara point, and then you slide to the outside, you'll get to another bony, sharp bony point, which is smaller, but still there. And that's where you need to be for this point. The energies for this point that are balanced are the pranavayu, the vyanavayu, and the shleshika kapha. So again, more lubrication for good joint health. The indications for this point are it also helps to coordinate movement between the upper extremity or shoulder and the elbow. And then there are local effects. So helps with pain, improved circulation, range of mo motion for the forearm, radiculopathy, so pinched nerve, whether it's in the elbow or in the sh potentially in the neck, shoulder can be helped here, or maybe even in the wrist. Um, you know, again, all these nerves running down the, the arm. Tingling, numbness, um, so again, helping with issues in the hand. And then this one specifically helps with lateral epicondylitis because it's on the lateral side of the elbow. Uh, and so lateral epicondylitis is tennis elbow, so it's not as helpful with golfer's elbow. But there you have the fourth point. So uh, just taking a couple minutes here to summarize and integrate all this, these four new points. Um, so again, all murmur points have local effects. So whenever you have an issue with the elbow, you might look at these first. All of them help with the upper, upper extremity, obviously. And point one, ani, helps with pancreas, bladder, and fluids, right? It's a watery point. Point two, or baha indrabasta, helps with the colon and also gynecological issues, specifically menstrual cramps, and then agni and toxins, so making sure that your body can transform toxins. And not just your body, actually, mental toxins, emotional toxins, you know, anything that's sort of built up and clogging the channels, whether mental channels or physical channels. And then again, the indrabasta also helps with mental clarity, emotional clarity, and spiritual efforts. Okay, so a little bit short and sweet today, but still hopefully helpful. So there you have it. We've done the whole upper extremity, shoulder. Uh, well, we started with hand. We did shoulder last time and now elbow. So the whole upper extremity is finished. And then we've done all the points on the neck and head and face and ears. Um, and we started with the chest and breast tissue, so next time we'll um, look at more points on the trunk and keep working our way through the body. All right, so um, thank you for your time and your attention, and I wish you well. Take care. Namaste. Until the next one.